My name is Norman Frisch. I, I work for Huawei Enterprise Business Organization. Huawei actually is in the, in the transport sector and in the enterprise sector for quite some time. So in the transport sector, we are supplying since 16 years um, dedicated technology, ICT technology for railways, for metro lines. And we have, we have learned a lot from that experience. And today, I show you actually what we are doing in the market, what we're doing for smart cities, because um, the technologies a uh, railway um, uses is very much applicable to what a smart city needs. And if you have listened to the panel sessions um, earlier today, there was a very nice statement made. I, I forgot the name of the person, but um, it was said that smart cities, cities are actually built on the back of the transport network. That is very important. If you want to have a smart city, if I want to have an efficient city, it has to be built on a good transport network, public transport, road network, aviation. So, and this is exactly the business we are in. I give you here a, a, a couple of information about drivers for smart city. So, and before going there, we've heard a lot about smart. So what, what is smart actually? So if you look it up, I actually used Google a little bit. And smart says to have the ability, the capability to do a decision, a human-like decision based on changing circumstances. This is smart. So how can actually a city do a human-like um, um, decision based on changing environment, change on environment we have seen here with regards to disasters? So. It is all to do with the services, actually the services which I'm able to tap, the services, the information the, the services deliver to me. I need to have them, I need to operate them on them, and then actually build a more efficient and cost-effective net, network. And I show you how a smart city can actually do this. Taking, taking, keeping in mind, so we talked about doing human-like decisions. So how does a human actually do smart decisions? So very important, a human collects a lot of information. We have a lot of sensors built in and all of them actually are transmitted through a transmission network which is the spine of the body into the brain. And inside the brain we've got the control center. All the different departments we hear, transport sector, the blue lights, police, um, all of them are there and need that information. So as smarter you want to be, as more information you actually have to feed into your control center. And this is exactly the business Huawei is in. We do ICT technology. We make sure that the information from your existing sensors, whether these are gunshot sensors, are very interesting to see. We're actually working a lot with Thales in different projects or sensors about number plate recognition. Um, this information needs to be efficiently transmitted into your control center. And inside the control center, I then have the processing and the software and the procedures on how to react, how to react smartly to these um, inputs. So moving on, I give you an example here about a very typical part. So I talked about the spine to transmit the information from one of the gunshot sensors, one of the CCTV sensors into your control center. How do you do that? You can have a long cable and you connect the cable through others and then you send it up to the control center. It's a very known, well-known way of doing it, but you will have to go through many hurdles. You have to build wires, you have to connect them, you might have to struggle through legacy systems which are already in place and you want to use them. It's, a, it, it's turning into a complex situation. Um, your police departments, the blue lights, most certainly they all have already existing systems and they are purpose built. They provide exactly what they want and what they need for their specific part. So the police can act actually very, very efficiently and based on that system. But then the fire department has a different system. So how do you get this information together into the control center and make a smart decision? It's a very complex activity. Just here, 
I show you uh, three different sectors how to do voice trunking, so push to talk functionality, how to do video collection and data collection, how many different wireless networks are there. And to maintain them are very costly. So we talked about the cost efficiency. We need to run a smart city. That means we also have to be careful on spending resources. So we have to have a cost efficient transmission network. And what we are doing here is actually we apply a technology which is around for quite some time, LTE, long-term evolution, to exactly do this. So LTE is a wireless system which can do push to talk, typical trunking functionality like the police does, as well as video transmission. Everything in the same system. I don't need multiple systems. I have one system doing the whole lot at the same time. The system is so efficiently, actually for your CCTV cameras, which are somewhere collecting information from your city, you just use the wireless system to transmit it. You don't need the cable anymore. So the system, as you can see on the bottom right, is actually an evolution from the old legacy systems which have been around um, in, in the world for 20 odd years. And today, the system is so advanced that you actually can collect this information in a very efficient matter. So this is only the spine. Remember the body, the spine, collecting information. But once you got the information, what do you do with it? Actually, we're talking about, it's a very typical term, big data. We actually moved from terabytes into petabytes. A huge amount of data is actually being collected. But how do you manage it? It's actually nowadays a challenge to get a specific piece of data you collected maybe a month ago just to review what it was. So big data is one of the key aspects to look into when you build a smart city. Effectively, not only collect the information, but also very efficiently distribute and process the information. Do number plate recognition. Recognize, is that gunshot maybe just a, a different noise which has been recognized? That needs to be transmitted. So today we have actually, you, you, you collect the data and you, can, you see the velocity of the data. Some of the data is actually extremely quickly. It needs to be transmitted and processed immediately. So that's the velocity. The volume, I mentioned the volume, how much volume, how can I efficiently find that data out of my set which I collected a, a month ago. The, the value of the data actually indicates how important and how much um, redundancy you need to actually save the data and to store it. Um, the data is very useful to run your city efficiently. Um, so you need to protect the data in a way of having it redundantly positioned. So the whole data aspect today actually hasn't been really um, looked at. But again, at the panel session um, this afternoon, it was said actually the data, data is one of the new natural sources, like water, like air. Data turns into something which is extremely important. It's just like important, like having air and water. So, and this is the business we are in and working. I, I come back to that slide. And on the right-hand side, you see we've shy, slightly changed it. Actually, the important thing is if you want to be a smart city, you have to make sure you efficiently process your data. You have the ability, ability to store and um, achieve and retrieve the information. And of course, you have to transmit it through the wireless system. So different components here are actually being shown um, on the slide. And I give you one example. I talked about LTE, and I brought a little bit. I also brought a video. Um, but my video is much smaller. It's not going to stop. Because what, what I've got here is a, a typical thing you've seen many policemen have it nowadays. Um, it's a trunking mobile station. You do push to talk, and you talk to one person or to many people. But what this thing actually does on top is it transmits videos, it receives videos from our stand actually which is outside the door. So the LTE technology today actually can exactly deliver what you were talking about. When I have a disaster, it is very difficult to describe the situation, to demonstrate the situation, and to have the expert at the location. The typical example I take is, 
you've got maintenance people. You don't, have a, don't need to have a disaster. You can have a maintenance. Somebody is doing maintenance on a regular basis. He opens the door of the box somewhere after he's driven for one hour to the place. He opens it and he sees there's red lamps in there and he has no idea what the red lamps is because he's there just to change the air filter. So what do you do? Do you just take that information and say, yeah, we send another guy there to have a look? Or can I actually use the mobile station and show the picture to the control center? And the control center then has the ability to see the cables, to see the lamps, and maybe to conference another person with a similar mobile to show them the video. It's a live video stream. So this is about efficiently working with information, putting it together, putting it into your control center, and then in the control center, you don't need to have everyone there. You only need to have the key guys there, and the real experts, which may be uh, experts for one cable or two, you can still conference in with the ability of technology available today. And that technology we actually show outside um, at our stand. I, I very much invite you to go there and have a look. Um, so we talked about the different services, and I give you, this is a little bit more, um, a very high level slide. On the bottom side, you see like, the two main drivers, the two main dimensions where technology and telecoms move here. On the left-hand side, we see a move from wireline into wireless. What it actually means is it's not everything is moving wireless. It means people using telecoms, they don't care. They don't mind, is it on a wireline system or is a wireless system? Both systems have to work exactly the same. I can send Skype calls on the internet when I'm connected on a cable, and I can do the very same on a mobile station nowadays. The same happens for video. Today, the customers expect the same technology. There is no change to be for moving from wireline to wireless. On the right-hand side, if I want to do efficient communication, I talk about push to talk, I push um, and functionality, trunking functionality, priority preemption for emergency response situations. On the top part, you can see how important on the left side it is to have a converged network. It is very difficult to maintain multiple systems which behave differently in different regions. They are costly and difficult to understand for the people using them. It is more efficient to have a converged network doing actually the same job for all of the other systems in a more efficient way. And once I have that on the top right, I can then actually use the information I have, add my computation to it, and do a smart decision. So, and how do we do this? I've got two more seconds. Um, in Tinyang, very simple city. So Huawei is a Chinese company, and China is a, a country where a lot of urbanization happens. So we have plenty of cities which exactly stuck in the problem. There are more people coming in, and we need to be more efficient in, in managing the city. So here in Tinyang, it's a 15 million people city. We do exactly this. We provide the CLTE system to provide CCTV, to provide communication to the different departments, and to provide information to do smart decisions for the people in the city. Today, the system has already 100 base stations, and we're growing it to 200 base stations in, in the final design. Here, another example for a metro line, where we provide video surveillance inside the cabs, so inside the passenger trains. Today, most of the passenger trains don't have this, and we have security staff walking through the trains, making sure that nobody is going to be robbed while they are moving in the metro. So this system can, besides many other things, easily do exactly that, providing CCTV and passenger information systems. And this is the last slide. Um, and that is a, a very simple example on how we provide something like an information island. And this is actually in Norway, it's on an oil platform, which had been, well, without communication. Laying cables to the, to the sea is a very costly thing. And this customer specifically actually used helicopters to provide maintenance and provide operational information into their control centers on a daily basis. Very, very costly, burns a lot of fuel. 
Um, what we have actually done is using this ELTE system to beam data broadband onto the platform. It's 37 kilometers away from the land. And suddenly, they have the same type of data services and voice services like you would have at home in your, in your home with your DSL or high-speed internet provider. So these are just the examples I just want to highlight here. And as I mentioned before, I'm more than happy to, to create you at our stand and to demonstrate you the, the abilities of Huawei in smart city environment. Thank you very much.